I have a problem. You see, I enjoy very, very difficult things. So this time I tried surviving an apocalyptic blizzard. I put together a mod pack that's 10 times harder than the last mod that I did. You see this? This is an ordinary zombie, but this is also a zombie. Over the course of 100 days, these enemies will get smarter and stronger. I've been on this mod pack for months and I still don't know what majority of them do. What, what even is this creature? I don't even know the name of this dude. The water isn't safe either. <laughs> God, trying to hide in water doesn't work. They can utilize things like ender pearls or lava or even TNT. Sunrises are very pretty. The night sky is also really pretty, but it's tainted with snow and very, very hardcore enemies. I sometimes question myself, why did it take so long to make this video? Okay, all right, I died to a baby skeleton. Nice. What the fuck? I'm gonna die. A lot of these enemies gets ridiculously strong to the point where they can even one shot you. A basic baby skeleton can easily take you out. This is me trying to survive a hundred days in an apocalyptic blizzard inside of hardcore Minecraft. These videos take a really long time to make. So please, if you enjoy, leave a like and subscribe. I do plan to do another one. Okay, here we go. Let's start this journey. Ah, I forgot to mention. For the first 40 days, every 10 days, mobs gains a new ability. It will get to the point where I'm able to spill blood and there is a potential for mobs to spawn in hordes. And see this thing at the top left? This will go up over time and it increases mobs overall. Knockback resistance, movement speed, HP, everything. I set these rules to make it more difficult. All right, day one. I'm already near death's door. That little symbol on the right side, if that goes away, I end up freezing to death. So I have to find at least nine wool Otherwise, my run is already over. So I, I saw this little this little hut, and usually when I see this hut, I know that there is a village nearby. I don't know how far away, but I know there's one near. So I steal the bed, and then I get out of there. I find this other structure. I don't know what this is, but they have a chest inside of it, and it only gave me two iron and a saddle. I quickly get out of there and continue searching for a village. I eventually do find the village and I'm glad I did. I only had about two minutes left before I died. I saw an alligator taking away one of the villagers as I was entering the village. Not like I can do much for the guy anyway because I don't have whatever. So I find these little things. I don't know what they're called. Either I have no basic knowledge of Minecraft or I'm just dumb. The reason why you need nine wool is to make a helmet and some boots. You need at least two wool armors in order to stay warm. If you have one, you will freeze to death no matter what you do. You can use a fire method like light fire around you, but if it starts snowing, that method no longer works. So now I'm able to calm down. I make my two my two wooden tools, my pickaxe and my axe. So I look around and I, I find the librarian. The tough as nails mod, you can no longer use heating goo for armor. The only way you can have something to apply to actual armor now is an enchantment and it's called thermal tuning. The only way you can get that is through a villager and that can be a little bit more complicated than getting mending. I don't have time to waste multiple days at the moment at least. So I look around looting, I got some apples. That was really about it inside the village. I go outside of the village and I, I see some cows. I wanted to get a canteen so I can drink water. Uh, yeah, another thing that this mod, I, I hate this. 
so you can't drink water anymore with your hands. You can't do that anymore. You have to use either a glass bottle or a canteen. And the four cows that I killed, all of them, only two of them dropped leather. So I go to another one of the little hut structures. I steal the furnace and then I go out, I get some sand and I make glass bottles. That way I'm able to drink water. I, I was nearly about to die from dehydration. After making the glass bottles, I saw this stranded villager, one of the ones that be stranded inside of the water. He was standing there around ice. He could have walked away, but he didn't. I go over there and I go inside of the chest. There was nothing inside of the chest. Has some TNT and some leather armor and I applied the leather, leather armor to me. I go back to the village. I take the wheat. I kill some cows and that was pretty much day one. The next morning, I end up making some bread. Then I went out to get some wood. I was going to do underwater mining, but then I realized that I had enough leather to make a canteen and a canteen holds five sips. So I don't have to refill as quickly as a regular glass bottle and it doesn't take as much space. So I get wood. I make some doors to do underwater mining. some iron it wasn't a lot of iron but it was enough for that moment and the next thing i wanted to do was get a lava pool so i get out of the water i look for a lava pool and luckily there was a lava pool right near me reason why i want this lava pool is because i'm going to be making a special that i used inside of my last video refined obsidian now, I'm not going to lie. I didn't want to bring refined obsidian back. And in fact, because of this, I will no longer be using refined obsidian inside of videos for a long while. Another thing is, luckily, inside of this run, I don't have to spend as long looking for osmium or iron. I pick up the osmium and then I go a little bit deeper inside of the water. And inside of this section, it had pretty much everything that I needed. It had redstone. It had iron. It had diamonds on day two the luckiest i will ever get inside of this remember this type of luck okay because it goes downhill from there i stand next to the redstone and i smelt some iron did i make an iron pickaxe that way i can pick up the diamonds and the redstone i got jump scared while i was picking up diamonds Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't I don't Is know what the thing was, but I saw an axolotl after that and I got super excited. So I smelted some more iron to make a bucket. I was afraid that it was going to get me killed, but I really wanted an axolotl. I never had like a, a pet axolotl. Got it. I got the yellow one, but then I decided I wanted the blue one. So I put the yellow one down the blue and one. Picked up the blue one. blue one. This is so gonna get me killed. Got it. Yeah, all of my fun was about to come to a major halt, though. Oh god. God. I can't see. What is this thing? I nearly died to some squid monster and I was really afraid of being inside of the area after that. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that the wool armor has no durability at all. You can get hit like five times and you lose your wool armor. It'll break. So I wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible, but I had no clue where I was. I didn't, I didn't remember how to get out of there. So I went to go pick up some more diamonds first, just some more, just to be safe, you know? But while I was doing that, I was thinking to myself that maybe my pet axolotl will be lonely. So I made me another bucket. I was looking for the axolotl, but I actually ended up losing the axolotl. Not for long though, thankfully. I eventually found the axolotl. Picked up some more iron and then I got out of there. By the time I got out of there, it was somewhat into day three. All right. 
We did it. I went back to the village, except it wasn't the same village. It was actually a new village. And this village had a little bit of emerald and a lot, a lot of apples. So I tried to get a trader to give me thermal tuning, but I, no one wanted to be a trader. Like there'd be like two of them. They would give me useless stuff. But then after that, no one wanted to be a trader. And then I saw a tiger out in the distance. I got scared. I wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. Leopards are friendly, but tigers are deathly and they can also go invisible. They have a stealth mode. And there he goes. Yeah, I'm just going to get out of here. Look at this. I don't even know why a tiger is so far out here in the first place. It's not even in its own biome. So I saw him coming towards the village and I wanted to get out of there as soon as I possibly can. So then I go back to the actual village that I was at. I ended up kidnapping a villager, but it was it was about to get dark. Okay. I wanted to keep trading all night, but uh, yeah. Okay, that's extremely close by too. So day four, I, I did some more trading, not a lot of trading. Luckily, I got so lucky. Okay, remember I said last time it'll all go downhill from there. Like now it's actually gonna go downhill from here. Slowly but surely, it'll ramp up. I got the guy to trade thermal tuning. All I needed now was some emeralds. So I was about to go get Flint to make a Fletcher, but I saw this this little hut and it had a zombie clown inside of there. I ended up taking out the clown. I went back to the water and I, I got some flint to make a fletching table. After getting the flint, I went back into the village. I made a fletching table and got one of the villagers to trade me sticks for emerald. Lots of lots of wood. It just so much wood and yeah, probably more wood than osmium in the last. I, I, I trade the sticks for emerald. It wasn't enough. I had to get more wood. I get more wood, trade some more of the wood or sticks for emerald. Then I ended up getting my thermal tuning. Now we're all set for now, except we're, we really weren't. I'll say about it in a little bit. I get out of the village and I travel out to go somewhere else that I want to be comfortable in, but it was getting dark. Day five, I go back towards the lava pool so I can pick up obsidian. I wanted at least 15 obsidian. On the way there, I got a little bit of copper. You're gonna need some of this. So I got there and I needed to set down my axolotl, but I was afraid to actually do it because I didn't want the water to freeze and it could possibly hurt the axolotl. I quickly set him down, run, get water, put water into the lava and then immediately pick him up. I made me a diamond pick and then I picked up obsidian. This is the only time I'll have to pick up obsidian. So I get out of there. I, I got sidetracked it though. So while traveling, remember I said that I don't really have everything. So because of that squid monster that scared me, I actually forgot to get something, which was redstone. I didn't pick up a lot of redstone. I need at least 25, in between 25 to 30 redstone. So the next goal was to look for a village that have a chemist inside of there. That way I can trade emerald for redstone. But I also needed a lot of iron and osmium. Not a lot, a lot, but I, I still needed it. So I'm out there traveling day six. I see a random villager. I see another one, not too far away, but I see another one. I'm like, okay, there's a village nearby. There was no village in sight. I don't know where these two villages came from, but whatever. I find a broken nether portal and it had some gold inside of there. I jumped inside of the water. I did a little bit of underwater mining. I got 24 iron, something like that. I got out of there once I was done picking that up. And then I just continued my journey looking for this other village and I, I couldn't find anything. Day seven, I saw a big body of water that I wanted to go in to get iron for, but I saw a skelly wag and I was like, no, not, not happening. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I traveled for a while and I found another broken nether portal and this one had a gold chest piece with mending on it. 
it's gold though so it's it's not really that special but just think about it it has mending on it next day though i finally found the village and this place had exactly what i needed i i wanted to check underwater first to see if there was anything special didn't look too crazy underwater i went inside of the village and i i saw that there was a place with the chemist great now i can get the red sound that i need but obviously i needed a fletching table so i got a fletching table i went around i tried to place down the fletching table I don't know why the green villager doesn't i don't i don't know what it is with the green villager i don't know what that means i fire a farmer and i made him a fletcher and do a little bit of trading got some redstone i needed some more wood i go get wood and then i do a little bit of more trading and then i have enough while i was trying to go to bed this this iron golem was just staring at me i don't know yeah whatever day nine i go out trying to find a place to build this laboratory that way i can make the refined obsidian while going out though i found another village but this village had nothing it was it was dry i saw yet another village next to that village that i was just at though that also had absolutely nothing so i just ran past it eventually i find a place with some lava it wasn't a lava pool it had like like one of the lava falls it was as long as it was one lava it was good i can i can utilize it in some kind of way you know i get on top of the lava and i'm ready to pick it up but i see i see lava like all the way down in the distance so i'm super confident inside of the area that i am at now when i'm about to pick up the lava there's an issue i don't have a bucket nor do i have wood so i can't craft a bucket I had to jump down, go get wood, and make a crafting table. That way I can make a bucket. When I was done, it was starting to get dark. Day 10, I go back to the lava, and I'm actually able to craft a bucket. So I sat down my crafting table, and I, I, I craft my bucket, and I pick up the lava. Luckily, inside of these kinds of areas, they have ore, like, just out in the open easily. So I, I pick up some osmium on my way to go pick up the lava, too. I found another broken. What is this? Like the third broken nether portal? I found another broken nether portal, and this one had a gold block on top of it, and it had two golden apples. Now, it clicked in my head when I saw all of this that maybe golden apples would be the way to survive. So, gold is now a very, very important thing to me. Seagulls. I. I, I, I don't even words can't describe how angry these things made me throughout my entire life. So many times I had to deal with these things. They griefed so incredible. <sighs> Whatever. I ignore the seagulls and I just go to bed. Next morning, I didn't ignore them, though. They're literally, as soon as I woke up, I'm having a war with them. After my little shenanigans was done, I smelt iron and I, I start the process of the, the super long process of making refined obsidian. If you haven't seen my last video, you should go see my last. I explained the whole thing, not in super great detail, but in my opinion, I, I feel like I explained it enough. It's just, it's a, it's a long process, but I feel like I got through it pretty, pretty quickly. So I set up my laboratory to make my refined obsidian. I get down, I wanted to get glass because I needed glass in order to continue the recipes and stuff like that. But the game had other plans for me. Really? So I dug a hole and there was a zombie that could sense me inside of the wall. 
he would not leave me alone. I made it a thing to survive the night of every 10 days. So every 10th day, I have to stay up. There is no sleeping on a 10th day. Also, since the 10th day has passed, more mobs spawn at night now. There were there were some people talking about me sleeping all the time. Kind of agree. It's not that much of a challenge if I'm constantly sleeping away the night. So blood moon sets. This guy is still by me. It's day 12. I tried to take out this zombie. It's a zombie with what is it, a shield or door? He has a shield. He was taking no damage though. No matter how much I hit him, he was taking zero damage because of the shield. So I had to set down my thing, my, my crafting table to make an ax in order for this guy's shield to go on cooldown so I can do damage to him. I made a golden ax. I don't know why a golden ax, but I, I made a golden ax and I ended up killing him. So I ended up getting back up the mountain and continuing my, my little crafting. I was a little bit short on iron because I wanted to make an anvil because obviously you would need an anvil to apply thermal tuning. So I, I smelted an iron pickaxe and I was hoping the iron pickaxe would give me an ingot. Instead, it gives me a nugget. It made me angry, not gonna lie, but it was, it was starting to get dark. Next morning, I continued the boring process of making refined obsidian. It's fun when you first learn to do it, but it gets repetitive. So I see iron and lava on the other, like this other mountain. I go over there. I pick up the lava. I also wanted to pick up iron and I saw this little area. I was afraid to drop down it because I didn't know if there was any mobs inside of there, but I, I just did it anyway. I, I pick up the iron. I pick up the osmium after checking around to see if there was like any mobs hiding. I wanted to jump down after picking up the iron, but I was afraid that I was gonna hit the ice. So I just said, nah, I'm not gonna do it. I assumed I had enough iron, but I didn't. I had eight iron and I needed 11 total. So I went back down to search for iron. I eventually found some iron though. So day 14, I make my heat generator. I make another heat generator. I set down an osmium compressor. This is the last piece that you need in order to make the refined obsidian. I also tried to make my anvil, except I couldn't. I needed one iron piece, just one iron ingot. So I go back to the other mountain and I, I meet a friendly foe of mine, a seagull. Oh, can you fuck off, man, dumbass seagulls. After being done with the seagull, I, I pick up the iron from the other mountain. I purposely ignored this iron too, because I was like, I I'm not going to need it. I probably wouldn't need it anyway. This time though, I decided to actually jump off. So I go back to the other mountain and I smelt this one iron. That way I can make my anvil now. All I had to do was wait for my refined obsidian. I got my refined obsidian. I made a chest piece and then I applied thermal tuning to the chest piece. Now I don't have to worry about my wool armor ever breaking because I can now I can no longer freeze to death. So I make my other refined obsidian armor. I make some boots and then I make me a headpiece. It was getting dark though. So I had to, I, I slept and then the next day I made a pair of pants. After I was done with that full armor, I have, I have a full armor set now, full refined obsidian set. We are gaming. I'm doing amazing now. I needed wood in order to make a Paxel. When I went to go get wood, I was met by pillagers. I really didn't want to deal with them. I didn't want to bring them back to my village because I just got my stuff and I really didn't want the villagers to deal with that already. I don't think that's a good first impression. So after ignoring them and just getting what I needed, I, I make my tool, I make my Paxel. I wait for my machines to run out of refined obsidian and all the other fuel. The only thing that I was missing was a shield. So after I was done crafting everything, I pick up all of my machinery and then I hit the road. On the way, I, I saw the one iron ingot, which is very, very nice. That way I can make the shield. So I set down my furnace and then I smelted iron. 
I thought I picked up some wood and I made a shield and then I made my refined obsidian shield. Now we are fully decked out on armor. I can no longer get stronger, but the enemies can. They will continue to get stronger every single day. I made it near my home, but it was starting to get dark. So I ended up sleeping. Day 16. I wanted to finally build my house and empty my inventory a little bit. And I also wanted to build an aquarium for my axolotls, but I wanted to get mending for all of my gear. I also just didn't know how I was going to build this aquarium. I, I kind of suck at building. I have good ideas, but actually applying them, that's a different story. I, I fire a chemist and I make him a librarian and we were trading for ages. This guy would not drop me mending. He he had something personal against me. I don't know what it was, but he did not like, he gave me like the same enchantment like three times in a row. Go to bed, wake up the next morning, trade like the second time he finally gives me. I can me only do this for one more day. And then if you don't get, thank you. He gave me mending. I was about to say, I can only do this for, no, stay inside. Cause I'm going to forget where you are. Stay. Stay. Don't stay. Okay. Don't stay. I wanted to trap the villager, but he just didn't want to stay. Soon you'll see this was probably the biggest mistake I've made throughout this run. This is the first big mistake I've made throughout the run. I wanted to see if I can craft gold to make a bunch of golden apples, like just do some wizardry or, you know, magic, some black magic. What I just wanted an easy way out to make gold. I couldn't do that though. I collected wood. I did some trading with the villager. It wasn't enough. So I went around collecting a lot. It was just a lot of wood that I, I needed to collect just to be able to get what I need. But I saw some villagers just in a ditch. I don't know how they mess up this quickly, but I did pass this hole and I was like, maybe I should close it off, but the villagers can't be that stupid. They were that stupid. So I get all of them out of there and I close the hole. What are y'all doing? Come out of the hole. Come on. While trying to close the hole, there was yet another villager. In How there. did you fall in already? Come on, get, get out. You're wasting my time. Why are y'all down here? I'm going to kill this villager in a second if he doesn't move. Jesus. So I go back to collecting wood after I was done with that. I spent a while collecting it. I go back over there to, to trade and I saw an iron golem just oh my God, suffocating. Iron golem dying. What are you doing, iron golem? Move. Day 18 was weird because the guy that I was just trading with, he just disappeared. Where did the Fletcher go? I had no idea where that guy went. So I just assumed he died and I, I started trading with another Fletcher. I saw something weird though. Oh, you're not hostile during the day. I don't like you anyway. What? How much HP do you have? Jesus. So I guess those squid monsters that I nearly died to on day two, so I guess they aren't hostile during the day. They're like spiders. So I got my mending dealer and I immediately applied it to the chest piece that had thermal tuning because obviously that would be the most important piece. But I saw that I was going to need more iron because of the mending. So I wanted to get more iron. I wanted to do more underwater mining. I almost say trading. I pretty much just collected wood for the rest of the day after checking the water. And man, sometimes I really just want to take the easy way out after doing something for a while. I wanted to see if I could make iron. I, I like just make it from scratch to do something. I did not feel like collecting a bunch of iron. I wanted to make my house out of cobblestone or just stone in general because mobs can eventually set down lava and I didn't want my house to get on fire. That was pretty much day 18, just collecting wood. Day 19, I, I traded with the Fletcher and then I tried to go find my mending dealer, but I heard a zombie out of nowhere. What? 
he fell into the hole? Or did he? This is the guy that's fine. Oh my god. Okay. I ended up filling the hole because I didn't know whether or not he spawned or it was actually one of my villagers. I wanted to make a dark metal weapon. Dark metal, you can only get dark metal through these special towers, but you'll see more of that later. I did a little bit more trading and it was, it was starting to get dark. The next morning, I went back to that trader. He wanted to trade emeralds for a crossbow, and I was actually a little bit tempted to get it, but I don't like crossbows like that. I went around looking for my mending dealer. I had no idea where he was. I thought he got lost again. This is why I kidnapped them, because I do not know where they be. And if he's dead, I'm going to be angry. There he goes. But I, I eventually found him. I applied mending to my Paxel. I needed three emeralds so i went around looking for who to trade with and i saw a farmer who wanted wheat so i picked up wheat and then i went back to the farmer i got my three emerald that i needed yeah but see that same mending dealer that i just traded from i swear they'd be in the most random places possible where are you i don't care if he's in a random place as long as he's not dead i kind of don't care we're on day 20 so if i survive this day i have to up the difficulty where is this guy? So my mending dealer is just gone. I need a whole new mending dealer now. This is great. Amazing. I don't know where he went. He's just gone. Like, where do you even go? Yep. Yep. He's just, he's just dead. That's cool. He's gone. Nice. Amazing. I don't know how, how do y'all achieve this? There's a hole. He's inside of the hole. How do y'all manage this, man? <laughs> Come on. I have emerald. I eventually found, I don't know how they just find these little potholes and then just like, ooh, pretty. And then just drops right inside of there. So I apply mending to my shield and I go away from the village there because I don't want things to spawn inside of the village. I don't want the villagers to die. I wonder if I ever took a picture of the coordinates, gonna be honest. I don't know. It is so dark. This guy has a diamond ax with a diamond pickaxe. Like, the dude is more drift out than I am. That's not good. I can't see shit. What is that? Oh, that's not good. defeated him let's go i'm so glad there was no other mob coming from my ass cheeks you know what's the saddest part about it all i can't hit that guy with the bow and arrow like when he's invisible i can't do anything i think the best strat is fighting them on ice because they're not as coordinated if they're on ice i can also make quicksand i can't make quicksand right now where did that creeper go The sun is rising, so I would say that I survived this night. Oh, there's a baby. Why do baby skeletons shoot so fast? That guy is gonna eventually take three hearts from me. It's now day 21 and mobs can see me from a lot further away now. That's their new ability. They have very, very good eyesight. I wanted to build my house in a very nice area, but there was no flat land. Words of a very wise man. If there's no flat land, make it. Who said that? I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I said it, okay? I came up with it a long time ago, all right? I spent so much time messing around with this stuff though. I spent like a while, like trying to get the perfect land, man. Like I said before, I'm not a good builder. Like I have good ideas in my head, but I can't apply that in game. I, I'm not, I'm not pro crafter, pro builder. You can't, can't call me Bob the Builder. No, you cannot. 
Day 22, I, I spent doing the same thing, but I got scared by this random explosion. God damn. What the fuck was that? Oh my god. I literally covered this hole so nothing would spawn here, but okay. So I ended up closing the hole off again and then continued doing whatever I do. Whatever. I wanted to go fishing, but I, I had no string to do so. It was day 23 and the iron golem was just staring at me like, what is this guy doing? He's been, he's been sitting here just throwing away dirt for the past two days. Whatever the case is, it was getting dark. I made chest that way I can finally clear up my inventory. So I put my stuff inside of there and I tried to go to sleep. Except I couldn't. I, I just, the game don't like it when I try to do those things. Oh God. Uh, you're so fast for what reason? I can't see this guy. But I think as long as I stay on the ice, I won't be like, there's no mobs that'll spawn on me. I would fight, but I don't have any food. I have three bread on me. That won't be enough to survive. I spent the night just standing on ice, but I saw something inside of the water that piqued my interest. It was just glowing at me and I wanted to know what it was. I think they're called like angler fish, I think. I, I don't I don't know what they're called. At least they look like angler fish because they have the little light on their head. I saw an enderman and I stared right at it. Ender pearls are definitely going to be very, very important to me in order to escape. I saw this zombie that had a strange helmet on it, though. What? What did he hit me with? Why did I take so much HP just now? Oh my god. Okay, that's not good. Now is it? Holy. I almost died. <laughs> oh my god. Vampires are not okay. And we're out of food. What? Oh, that's a skellywag. Ow. I want to kill it. It's going to kill me. Never mind. You know what? You got it. So remember, just always remember that helmet. All right. That helmet that that zombie had. <laughs> Very hurtful. Something happens. Anyways, so I, I run around. I try to find a place with iron because I wanted to get iron in order to make an anvil. I saw this hole. I didn't want to go inside of there because it was about to get dark. So instead, I did some underwater mining for now. That was going to be the safer route for me to go. I pick up iron. I get out of there. I go to bed. Day 25. I think I'm turning schizo. What? Is that an invisible creeper? Where is it? I heard this creeper. I swear I heard a creeper near me, but there was no creeper near me. I don't know what happened, but I swear there was audio of it. I, anyways, I go down. I'm trying to get iron. I don't want to go too deep down there because I'm not a rich man inside of food or golden apples. I did randomly see a zombie just fall from the heavens. I just watched a zombie. <laughs> okay. I saw the skeleton while I was doing my thing too. It was just shooting at me. And then he, he performed a very, very special magic trick towards me. And there he goes. He's just flying right up to me. Now, I saw an Enderman too, and you already know why I want Enderman. But the Enderman randomly just never came towards me. But then he suddenly did, and I saw how. He dropped the ender pearl, but it fell to the bottom and I, I was brave enough to actually go get it because I had a source to get back up to the top, but that was kind of a mistake.
I nearly died. Not even just to miles, but to fall damage. But I, I got a special visitor too. Whoa, whoa. That scared the shit out of me. Oh my God. Okay. After getting my special little visitor, I ended up getting everything that I needed and I, I got out of there. So while trying to get back home, I actually was lost. I, I don't know where I was. I was looking around and I just couldn't find home. So I had to pull up my coordinates and I, I eventually found home, but it was starting to be sunset. I started looking around for a little bit more iron. So I, I, I wanted to do some more underwater mining. I eventually found a little bit of iron and just a small amount of osmium. I don't even need osmium anymore, but it's better safe than sorry. It might be useful in the future in some kind of way not foreshadowing anything so i made a furnace and i started smelting all of my iron while i was doing that i did some more trades with the villager i got the iron and i was about to make my anvil but i was once again short on iron i don't know why i can't remember the exact amount that i need to make an anvil but i just can't i needed two pieces of iron so i do some more underwater mining get the iron and get out of there i go back home day 27 i wake up i do some more trades i get Get enough emerald that I need in order to get mending. I wanted some more iron to repair the iron golem, so I did some more underwater mining. I was visited by this little zombie and I, I was really close to drowning myself. So I go back inside of the water, I get ironed, but I, I had a little oopsie. I got inside of this little dark cave and I had no idea where I was and I didn't want to be there. I couldn't really see and I didn't know what mobs was inside of there. There was just one mob that just would not die. I hit him, I don't know how many times. I started hearing more footsteps around me and I, I wanted to get out as fast as possible. So I just swam out of there and went back to the surface. I get back inside of the village and then I, I spot something amazing to me. Oh wait, there's four iron golems? Jesus, y'all are welcome. Me keeping this village safe. I guess they're doing their thing. So I go back to my little spot and I, I make my anvil. The iron golem I was going to repair, I end up repairing him and a few more. Just making sure all the iron golems are nice and healthy. I didn't have much iron, but I did what I could. So I started applying mending to my armor. I applied it to my headpiece first. After that, I just started collecting cobblestone for the rest of the daylight that I had. I decided to make my house out of smooth stone. Smooth stone looks cool. I wanted to start building, but the iron golem was just in, he was just always invading my privacy. All right, iron golem, I need you to move out my way. I gotta, I gotta build, buddy. I was doing a pretty decent job in my eyes of making this. I wanted to make a water purifier. I eventually do. I go out, I, I get sand in order to make this water purifier. And I'm just going to tell you right now, this thing got used probably like three times. There's little to no point in using this thing because you just go through thirst so fast. Even with purified drinking, you still just burn through your hydration. It was getting dark. I slept and then day 29, I continued building the house. I was thinking about making the floor an aquarium. That way I can still see my axolotls, but the Minecraft world had better plans for me. What the fuck? What did I even do to you? Okay. Just randomly getting attacked by an Enderman. <laughs> so after that, I, I made my water purifier. I drank some nice purified water. Yummy. I wanted to make a gold door just to have a fancy door. But then I discovered I, I discovered another door, a sliding glass door. And this door is probably one of the most exciting things to me. I don't know why, but it, it's just amazing. Just look at this. That is so cool. I had to extend the house by one. That way it can be even on both walls. It can have like, I don't know, seven walls on left side, seven walls on the right side, two doors in the middle. 
because one sliding door didn't look cool. So I had to do two sliding doors and I wanted to make it with pressure plates too, but I didn't know what kind of pressure plates I wanted to use. So I thought about it for just a second and I just said, whatever, I'm going to use gold pressure plate. This is probably a waste of gold, but we'll see. That's nice. Hey. Why am I getting excited for this? That's <laughs> still nice though. The only problem is mobs can open that. So I could tell you, you know, making my smooth stone and whatever, and it was starting to get dark. Day 30 though. So I, I lost my mending dealer. I had no idea where he went. He just completely vanished off of the face of the earth. Yeah, I can buy it with that rope. Uh, where is my mending dealer again? How is this guy always lost? I lost him earlier today, like an hour ago. He was inside of a hole, but I, I covered the hole. So there's no way he fell in it again. Unless he fell in another one. And I just saw him like last morning too. Where did he go? Oh boy. Well, how do you just keep getting lost, man? Like, did he fall in that hole? Or is he dead? Because I don't see him at all. If I find him, I'm boxing him up. I'm actually just going to put him in a box because I'm tired of losing this guy. He's like the most important person inside the village. I, I have to. I don't have a choice. Because he just somehow keeps getting lost. Yeah, no, nah, I'm I'm just gonna. I have to get another dealer now. I don't know where the hell this guy went. It doesn't make any sense how he keeps doing this. Someone, please. Librarian, I need it. Why is no one taking the job? Day 31, so I kidnapped one of the villagers and I forced him to just constantly trade. I was not letting him leave until I got mending. I spent all day, the entire day doing that. Finally got mending though. Finally. You want 36 emeralds for it though. So, but this time I locked him inside of there. I wasn't making that mistake again. Day 32, I realized that I forgot to stay up on day 30 because I was dealing with my goddamn loss of the mending dealer. But I ended up losing another guy. How did, how did I lose? How did I lose him again? How did I lose my Fletcher? What is happening to the villagers? I'm not staying up long enough for mobs to even spawn. Where are they going? So now I don't even have a Fletcher. So now I need a Fletcher. So I just fire the blacksmith because not like I need the blacksmith anyway. And I made him a Fletcher. Then I got one of the mending books that I needed. I only needed one more mending book now. So I go back home and discover something. How, why are you in my place? Why? <laughs> I can't make this up. And he has no idea how to get out of there too. No idea. Come on, get out. Unless he's just stuck. Come on, out, get out, get out of my house. My incomplete house. Come on, come on, get out. You're trolling. I don't have time for this. What are you doing? Come on, get out. Out, go. I don't know how, whatever. I I put mending on my pants. So now I just have to put mending on one more thing. But I go back trying to trade and the new, the new fucking employee that I had, the new Fletcher, look at what he does. 48? Why is it so much? I will, I will be rid of you. I don't know why you're trying to upsell me, but count your days. Make that second. But now it's time to survive the night. So I, I went around just killing mobs. Oh God, ew. What is happening? Oh, there's a lot of enemies underground. Ooh, string. Need that. 
creepy spider. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> he just killed the zombie. Holy. Okay. That's not what I wanted to do. My scroll will just put a ghost input. And I've lost my ender pearl too, so that's cool. Shooting me? He's shooting me with a bow? Yes. Kill him. Oh my lord. want to get hit by him. I'm already missing a heart. And he's just sprinting towards me. This will be the last smooth night that happened. Because I survived this night, mobs will no longer burn inside of the sunlight. So after surviving that night, it's day 33 and I have enough string in order to make a fishing rod. I make a fishing rod, I go fishing, I get fish, and now I want a cat. Run around, I find this white cat. Tried running away from me, but since he's on ice, he can't control himself at all. So now I have one cat and two axolotls. Come on, cat. I don't want to lose you. Because I, for some odd reason, always lose my cat. Perfect. Or should I say, perfect. <laughs> what am I doing? I decided to name the cat Galaxy Destroyer. So you will now be seeing him a lot. I collected wood, try to go home, and this guy is in my house again. Why do you always pick my house? Like, the house isn't even complete. Why do I have four iron golems patrolling my house. Why is there so many iron golems in this village? Are they reproducing or something? Like, I'm lost. I didn't even know they can do this. There's so many of them. So day 34, I continue building my house. I got 26 emeralds. I thought that was enough, but then I remembered that I needed 36 because my mending dealer vanished. So I go get more wood and I go back over there to trade with him. I get the 36 emeralds that I need. I saw that he had some special arrow. It puts slow on enemies. So I was gonna get a lot of that. I get the last mending book that I need and now all I have to do is finish the house. I wanted my axolotls and my cat to be living comfortably while I go out and adventure. But I don't know why this villager just constantly, ever since I put the plates down, villager, this guy always in my house. How do you manage to do this every single time? Please get out of my house. I wanted to have like desks and lamps. There was no desk, but there was a lamp. It was a, pa it was a paper lamp. The paper lamp actually looks cool. Now I would do dyed stuff, but I'm just too lazy to do so. So I just go with basic white stuff. So day 35, I continue building my house and I thought it was the bed that was attracting the villagers. So I take away the bed. This guy just keeps coming in my house. Please leave. Go. Get out. Stop coming in my house. Get out. Go. Leave. Be gone. Thank you. Why? Why, man? I, don't, I, I give up. I don't even care anymore, man. I decided I wanted bow and arrows. 
That way I can, you know, not have to melee. Some mobs have immunity to bows anyway, but whatever. It's not like it matters too much. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my roof. I always like to have glass. That way I can have sunlight. But I also didn't want just a full glass roof. I was going to figure it out eventually. I wanted to get started on making the paper lamps too. And the issue is there is no sugar cane because of the cold. No sugar cane grows. That's like an extremely rare thing. So the other way to get paper is by using tree bark. You get logs, you make a cutting board, you set the log on there, you right click with an ax and it gives you tree bark. You use three tree bark and it gives you paper. I didn't know how the paper lamp looked at first. I wanted to try and see how it looks. And I really like the way it looks. That looks pretty cool. I actually like that. I ended up sleeping in day 36. I wanted to, <laughs> this was sad. I wanted to have lamps because I had this vision in my head. I wanted to use a sea lantern for like the lamp or the water. I was in for a rude awakening. I tried to craft it only to realize that I can't. It didn't work like that. So no sea lantern for my axolotls. While continuing to build a house, I learned that I can actually turn on and off the lamp, but I continued getting wood and that way I can get tree bark to make the little paper lamps. Day 37, I, I spent the morning making tree bark so I can get the paper for the lamps. I had a paper lamp on each corner of the house, you know, that way no mobs spawn. And I did some trades with the villager and for the rest of the day, I just worked on my roof. I decided to make the roof of my house out of glass, a pattern of glass and smooth stone day 38. So I don't know what I did or what I was trying to do, but the pattern on the roof didn't look right to me. I don't, it just, it was messing with me for so long. I spent a good minute trying to fix this. Eventually I ended up getting it and I wanted to get started on the aquarium. So I started digging. I was also kind of mixed feelings about my roof because of the amount of snow that would get on top of there, but not much that I can really do about it. So I went out and just started getting coal because I needed it in order to make the stone and smooth stone that I needed. Day 39, however. Why are you in my house? Why do y'all just keep going in my house? Stop. Like y'all have y'all very own place, whole house. But no, let's go into this guy's house. It's not even completed yet. Like I can't even say that ah, it looks good. So day 39, I started fully working on the aquarium. I wanted to have this like, I guess you can call it like an upside down pyramid. I don't, I don't know. I wanted like some kind of upside down like stair pyramid kind of thing going and I wanted to make it out of sand sea lanterns and kelp but we already know the problem with sea lanterns. I also wasn't sure if I needed more lighting inside of the house to prevent mobs from spawning. I started to get sand that way I can you know make the ground or the floor the upside down pyramid out of sand and I also needed a lot of glass that way I can make the floor obviously out of glass so I can see my axolotls in the aquarium. Once I started putting down the sand, it was getting dark. Day 40. Get out of my house, man. Oh my God. What do you gain? What, what do you actually gain? Like, buddy, come on. Get out like you're an amazing trader and all but i i really need you to stop coming in my house i'm gonna take away the pressure plates just because of you get out out come on man if that guy comes in my house one more time i'm gonna take away the golden pressure plates what that scared me i thought i died <laughs> oh And there he goes in my house again. Okay, yeah. All right. I'm taking away the pressure plates. As cool as it look, I gotta take it away. Cause this idiot just keeps coming in my house. After ignoring the villager, I just continued to work on the aquarium until it started to get dark. Once it was starting to get dark, it was time for my nightly battle.
Oh. oh my god, I died. Okay, now I was going to joke about it, say that, uh, you know, it doesn't count because it's a nightmare and, you know, I illusioned and it was a dream and all this other stuff. But this is only the beginning. I, it was it was getting so bad to me because I've been on this mod for months and this was by far the best run. This is as far as I've gotten. I took some days off after that first one. I come back. And, uh, oh, my lord. Yeah, so this, this happened. I was going through it mentally and I I don't want to fake it. I was even thinking about cutting that out the video. The second death, I, I told myself I'm not going to put that inside the video, but I didn't want to be one of those fake guys who does a hundred days and then be like, hey, I, I survived a hundred days or I only had this amount of deaths. No, I don't fake videos. I never will fake videos. Some people say they've done a hundred days and haven't even done a hundred days. The next a hundred days, there is no death. I, I will do, I will achieve it. I will accomplish it. I was miserable. I was so down. I was, I was defeated. I just continued working on my house day 41 and a few other days just in silence. And I, I still had Galaxy Destroyer with me to support me while I was building my stuff. He was there at the moment. You know, I finished setting down the sand. I set down my axolotls. They could finally be free from their buckets. And now I was doing a lot of back and forths. I didn't know if you know how there's water and it has like dents inside of the water when you place buckets down. I didn't know if that was going to happen. I just continued filling the space with water anyway. And it was just a lot of back and forth throughout that day. Eventually, I filled the whole thing with water, no dents, and my axolotls were swimming greatly. They were having the time. They were having they were having a blast. I got a lot of tree bark. I used the remaining wood and traded that with the trader. I jumped down inside the water to get kelp. I wanted to like I wanted to make it like a natural growing looking kind of thing going on inside of there. So I didn't fill the whole thing with kelp, but I I placed like one there to here and stuff like that without thinking that it would continue to grow but it still looked good though day 43 i put a little more kelp down and it looked good i was like okay this looks nice i then collected some sand and i collected some wood i didn't have enough paper to make four lamps because i wanted one in each corner so i sat down one just to see how it looks it didn't break or anything and it actually looks good on the water. But then I thought to myself that I want two on each side. And I also was getting tired of looking at the dirt with the sand. So I took out the dirt and put, I put sand there instead. It was looking good. It was looking so nice. It was looking better than I thought it would, honestly. It was starting to get dark and I did some more trades with the villager. And then I went to bed. Day 44, I spent a really good chunk of the day just getting wood and then I made tree bark. Turned that tree bark into paper, made some lamps. I had all the corners with the lights and all I had to do was just place the floor now. For day 45, I turned the remaining logs that I had from the tree bark into wood planks, into sticks, and then tried to trade with the Fletcher. I lost the Fletcher, but then I found something. What? What are y'all all doing here? My original mending dealer is here? I don't know how they managed to get themselves in these situations. I actually do want another mending book, so this works for me. I was glad to have my man's back, my original mending dealer who sells for cheap. Anywho, I continued making my floor. I only needed just a little more glass, but I saw this random cat and he ran into my house. I couldn't tame him because I didn't have a fishing rod and I didn't have string. Why would you go into my house, you cat? So I really just scared him off. 
made him get out of my house. And I wish I could have kept him, but I, I couldn't. My floor is done though. Doesn't that look nice? It looks amazing. So I started bringing everything inside. All of my chest, my furnace, anvil, all of that stuff. We're looking great. Looking like a modern home. The glass doors was on grass and I didn't like the way that looked. So I, I instead put stone there. And now the house is actually 100% complete. I put the gold plates inside of the house instead of outside of the house because then maybe villagers won't come to my door. I was wrong. On day 46, guess who decides to pay a visit? I don't know what it is with the villagers. They don't want to come to your house until they see the plates. I made a bit of quicksand and then I traded sticks for emerald, but my main guy ran out of emerald and then another random villager just oh, wow, stole just his fletching table. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to make this guy sell me emeralds for sticks. I did that, got emerald. It was getting dark. I slept. For day 47, I decided I wanted to give me another mending book to put on my bow. Now that I had everything, I wanted to go out traveling. So I said goodbye to Galaxy Destroyer and my two axolotls. The axolotls, I named them Fred and Ferret. So I got out there, I said good luck to them and went on my way. So with the dark metal hammer, the way this works is it has a special ability to it. Each dark metal weapon has something special towards it. And the dark metal hammer, if you jump and hit, it actually like stuns the enemy. They can't, they can't move. They're like stuck in place for like two, three seconds or whatever, which is why I really wanted a dark metal hammer, but it's, it's kind of expensive. I forgot to bring a bed. I have to go all the way back now. Now I have to run all the way back there. Hello there, Galaxy Destroyer. Fred and Fred, I forgot a sleeping bag, so she's gonna make that real quickly and uh, be on my way. I saw an Enderman and I wanted to kill him, obviously, to get an Ender Pearl. When did he take a heart from me? But it was getting dark, so I, I ended up sleeping. Day 48, I woke up and I pet the chicken next to me. It was pretty uneventful for day 48, besides me just getting a bunch of animals, petting them, caring for them, loving them, and whatever. I nearly fell in a hole. Whew. What is that sound? Oh, a zombie. I was glad a lot of animals was around because I really, really needed food. I saw this body of water that I really wanted to cross, but I was kind of afraid to do so because of skellywags. And for some odd reason, I decided to swim across it instead of using a boat. Luckily, there wasn't any skellywags there. I love cherry blossoms. I think they're really nice looking. I don't like cherry blossom biomes though because that's what tigers spawn. And I do not like tigers inside of the cross. game. I could take traveling i saw this village the village didn't have anything it had some animals i of course took care and fed them too that was really it i got out of there took care of some more animals and went to bed day 49 i was getting trolled majorly by these seagulls and i don't know who thought this was a good idea i'm just gonna say this right now okay why do bows not work on seagulls okay i like i already miss a lot because of the way they fly but why when i actually hit them the arrow just bounces off of them who thought it was a good idea to do that anyway i could I, I finished playing with the seagulls and i wanted to make a smoker i can easily make another furnace i like using smokers because it takes less time to cook all of my food so i i cooked quite a bit of food i sat there waiting for my food to be cooked once i was done with that i continued traveling i saw a, a, a broken nether portal underwater i go there i pick up the gold block that's usually at the nether portal i go inside of the chest there was nothing inside of there besides some gold nuggets which could be useful because you could just make them into gold ingots but the next day i made a boat and i traveled across the water what i was looking for was those towers that have the dark metal inside of them and i suck at finding these things i ran into an army of seagulls too while i was trying to get to some destination 
and I was just being robbed by these guys. Luckily, they didn't take too much from me, and it was a 10th day, so I had to stay up the night anyway. I, there was no sleeping. I found a nice looking area, very cool looking, and I decided I was just gonna play around with the enemies here. And so, my night begins. Everybody's getting attracted to me now. Let's spill some blood. Oh my god. Okay. Hey, how aware they are. They like actually target me from so far away now. Holy. What did you just do to me? Why can he shoot at me? He dropped some dark metal at least. I don't know what this cursed mark does. Oh! What the fuck is this zombie wearing? They are actually chasing me from so far away now. That guy fucking hurts. I'm gonna eat a golden apple. Oh! What is that? Because of that one hit, everybody is on me now. Look at how many mobs there are. Okay. Oh my god! Okay, noted. Anybody with that helmet, I have to stay away from. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god! Dude hit me one time and took five hearts. Five. Reminder that I have the strongest armor in the game on right now. And there wasn't much I could do either because his hits just slowed me. Made it though, we're day 51. I forgot I had quicksand. Ugh. I was in such a panic that I completely forgot. All right, so it's very eventful night. Day 51 though, I'm still looking for these damn towers. I find this black structure and they have these fire roaches. They touch you, you get on fire. One of them was shooting an arrow at me. <laughs> and it still sets you on fire. These little black structures, they have hidden chests inside of them. Sometimes they can have something useful inside of it. Sometimes they can have something absolutely useless inside of it. Now check inside of the chest, it actually has something useful. It had, it had iron, gold, and dark metal inside of there. It was getting dark though, ended up sleeping. The next day, I find another nether portal while traveling. It had a golden apple inside of there and some gold nuggets. There was also a gold block up top, two of them. I was very glad I got that, very nice. I was getting rich. 
I found another one of the black structures with the chest and there was nothing inside of there. And I also found the village, but the village had nothing. And I almost had an accident. I hit a villager while the iron golem was right there. I didn't mean to hit him though. So I just continued traveling. Day 52, just uneventful, nothing. Just saw a structure that I wanted to go into, but it was getting dark. Day 53, I went to that structure. I killed this drowned zombie. I went to the chest. There was a golden apple outside of the chest for some reason. I don't know where that came from. I also almost got teleported by a weeping angel. Oh. That stuff is like one of the most terrifying things to hear out of nowhere. Look at this guy. So I saw this other structure is like some kind of abandoned mansion. It didn't have anything inside of there though. It had a golden apple actually. That's one thing that's good. It had a golden apple. Everything else inside of there was useless. It was just, it was just nothing. While traveling though, I was getting annoyed and I was just thinking to myself, maybe it's time to like turn back home and have a new route to look for these towers. Day 54, I found this like this long cave. It was like inside of a mountain. I was like, ah, no way am I going in there. It's just not happening. And then two seconds later, I decide to go right in there because why not? Like I have all the armor in the world. What could possibly stop me? Like I didn't almost die. Like I don't know how many times already. I looked down there and I didn't really see anything I was interested in. And so I just left. I continued traveling. I found the broken nether portal. It had the gold inside of there. The chest, I don't remember what the chest had inside of there. I'm not sure. But I continued my travels after I was done, you know, looking around the nether portal and getting what I wanted. I also saw a little turtle. turtle. <laughs> it looks like it's blushing. <laughs> I got to name you too. You're like a darker version of grass. We're going to call you moss. Yep. So at this point, I was solidified on going home. That my next place was just to go home because I was tired of looking around and not finding anything. So day 55, I'm on my way home and I find another one of the black structures. I killed the little fire roaches. I go inside the chest. It was a good chest. It had gold and iron inside of it. I just continued going home, but it was getting dark. So I slept. But day 56, on my way home, I finally did it. Oh, I finally found one. Two of them right next to each other. I found one of the towers. I found the boss tower and I found one next to it and I immediately went to go loot it. Okay, he just doesn't care. So this giant skeleton, he has a shield and my Paxel, for some odd reason, don't count as an ax and I have to use an actual ax to kill him. So my plan was, I don't want to go through it because they probably have some powerful enemy. The plan was to build outside of the fortress and try to get to the top because the dark metal ores, they lay inside of the roof of the tower. I was like, hopefully they don't have any defense mechanism. Boy, was I wrong. Oh God. Something hit me through the wall. Ah. Okay, I have to eat it. That thing hurts. Okay, going to the top of that safely is not happening. So I put it on hold and I go to the other tower and said, this one is a lot easier. There was no dark metal, but they had some useful stuff inside of there. Not like super useful, but just like basic necessities. 
I didn't really loot it that much, but it had iron and some arrows. Not too bad. So my mind was back on going into the black tower, but it was about to be nighttime. And I don't want to be stuck inside of there at night. I just waited for it to be time to go to bed. The next morning, guess who decides to do the same plan? I was like, hey, maybe that defense mechanism only happens once and I took it out. Maybe I'll be good if I go a little bit further away. That wasn't the case. Oh, God. Okay, this guy. Makes no sense why they do that much damage. Okay, going up top there is a no-go. That's just not happening. So I actually decided to go inside of the tower this time. I didn't go all the way up top because I was afraid of those little flying things. I don't know what they're called, but I was afraid of those flying things because they hurt a lot. And they have spawners inside of there too. And the spawners can spawn enemies with that little vampire bat helmet too, which hurts a lot. So there's like two of them with that. I can pretty much die. So I was like, I'm just going to come back to it later. I saw a broken nether portal. I looted it and then I made it back home at nighttime. I made it back home near nighttime. I thought I had apples. I really did. I really need some. Make some golden apples so I can survive. Day 58, I wake up and my cat is outside somehow. How did you do that? This day I wanted to make a sniper tower and I didn't want to use lava as a defense mechanism. If you kill a zombie with lava, they become a lava zombie. But I spent all day like trimming this wall, pushing it back for both day 58 and 59. Day 60, there was a villager that came in my house to become a butcher and it was getting annoying. I thought, oh, if I just take this away, he won't come back inside and then I can put it back down. I put it back down and the guy is back there. So I had a nice, nice talk with him. I continued making my sniper tower. My sniper tower was pretty basic. It was just made out of cobblestone. Obviously, I don't want to work with wood at all, considering mobs can drop lava. So for day 60, I just spent majority just making that. I wanted to make this pit around the sniper tower for mobs that would be dumb enough to go up to it. I don't know why. I did. That was full of quicksand because again, I can't use lava. So the next best thing was quicksand. They died by suffocation. I made my floor and then I made the middle of it with glass. I thought it, I, I thought it looked cool. I didn't want the whole thing to just be pure cobblestone. So I did that and it was another night to survive. So I went out. Oh God. So fair. Jesus. I am so glad I made this quicksand. Okay. 
Why is this dude so fast, man? At this point, man, after this night, it took a serious toll on my mental. I stopped playing for like a week or something. I just, I could not bring myself to play. I was contemplating on, do I even want to continue with this video? And it was already a while after I uploaded too. Like it, it's been a while since I uploaded, but I was still contemplating on whether or not I want to even use this video. But I still managed to come back and do the run. But I don't mind showing my failures, you know, instead of just faking it and acting like I, I didn't live. That was another death that I was thinking to myself, like I just won't put it inside of the video. I checked that mask or skull to see like what ability it gives and it gives a shit ton of speed so running away from that guy doesn't work so it's it's difficulty 59 or whatever with more movement speed there is literally no such thing as getting away you can't run away from that the, I, I, anyway i continue working on the pit i i wanted it to be i don't even know how many blocks deep i want it to be deep enough where even an enderman can suffocate inside of there so I, I built it pretty deep and then i got sand but it was starting to get dark so i slept and then the next day i got gravel i had a lot of sand and gravel i made me some quicksand and I started filling in the little pit with quicksand. It wasn't enough quicksand, so I had to go back out and get more quicksand. I had to I had to get gravel and stuff like that. But it was it was getting dark again. The next day I see this little small dark cave and it had a skeleton back there. Oh my god. While getting gravel, I got robbed again. No. Try to take a golden apple. I finally finished my quicksand pit, and then I just started trimming the wall again. I wanted to have space between my tower, the pit, and, you know, a wall where enemies can just stand. After trimming the wall, I went to get wood. Because on day 64, I wanted to make a trap block you'll see what this is so basically this trap block it's good but at the same time it sucks the reason why the trap block sucks is because you know how you have let's say a dirt block and you right click on the side of the dirt block it places the dirt on the dirt or next to it trap blocks you can't do that no matter where you right click on it it won't place it if you use that as a platform i guess you can call it now you probably wonder oh why don't you just have a middle platform then you know just place some dirt under it you place the trap block on top of it then remove the dirt you can't do that the reason for that that is anything that touches the block it breaks it, literally anything and if the stick from the trap block was to touch another trap block it just breaks that one it, it's just a whole chain reaction so i left the middle open but i put traps on the two other sides day 65 so for the top of my tower i wanted i wanted the walls to be a wired fence i wanted to use barbed wire but barbed wire is too expensive wired fence you only need bars and some wood nothing else bars is super easy to come by you can get 16 of those really really easily now the only thing that's different is barbed wire slows the wired fence it just deals damage so any mobs that's gonna fly up there they will run into the fence and then take damage if i was super rich on iron i would make a barbed wired fence day 66 i added torches to the tower that way mobs don't spawn inside of the tower and i also wanted to use this day in order to test the tower i wanted to see like how good it actually is i just sat there waiting for it to be nightfall just so i can test out this tower it eventually became nighttime though I didn't even think about this, but mobs would spawn inside of the village, obviously, and then pro like possibly take out all the villagers. It's not like I really needed the villagers anyway, because I had everything I needed, but still sad to see. I nearly had an accident, though, while on this tower. Oh! What the? 
What is that? I'm so lost. What is targeting me? Oh God. Why would you walk there? Why? What is that? Fell in the trap. So day 67, there was still a mob outside of my house. There was the the one from the very beginning of like day 11, the one with the door. Yeah, that guy. I don't know what this guy's problem is, but he clearly does not like me. I ended up just suffocating him because I had no idea if he was taking damage from me or not. I also found out what the cause of those little ground bites were. It was this guy who holds an enchanted book. They have some kind of magic. One of the iron golems got caught inside of my trap. He walked over the trap block. So I tried to get him out. And when I was trying to get him out, I actually accidentally hit the guy. Ow, nope, that was an accident, okay. God damn it. Ah, uh, I was actually kind of upset about that. I really didn't want to lose an iron golem, but it happens. But the game, no likey. They, they don't like what I'm doing. Oh, great. I didn't want to survive outside. I didn't have golden apples like that. So instead, I barricaded myself with quicksand at my door. But since one of the skeletons started getting caught, all of the mobs around was like, hey, yeah, this guy is inside. Through the glass? Yeah, these mobs, they don't care if you're inside. They will still try to break down your door, whatever it takes. And I had this annoying dog just constantly breaking my glass too. It started to get really, really hectic inside of the house. I'm just breaking all of my glass. Can you please stop, man? I don't know where that ender pearl went. Never mind. I ender pearled my way out of the house because of the amount of enemies at my door. God knows if there was a creeper there too. Beginning of day 68, I just cleaned up the enemies that was around the house. 
I had to repair my house and all that stuff too. But the new goal was to find a new dealer. I wanted to get Sharpness 5. I wanted Sharpness 5 if I ever got that dark metal hammer. I tried to get a trader, but the guy wouldn't trade with me. And I really didn't feel like sitting there for too long trading anyway. There was an Enderman nearby. This guy had so much HP. I don't know why he had... Well, yeah, it's difficulty 60 something. Of course, he would have a lot of HP. I spent a, I spent a little bit trying to kill that guy, get his Ender Pro. I don't think he dropped me anything though. I had to repair all of the glass on my window. This time, instead of using glass panels, I used actual glass blocks. I don't know why I did that change, but I think it was because of the skeleton shooting me through the glass. But any anyway, day 69, I fired the chemist. I made him a librarian instead. I didn't trade with him for long. I didn't, again, I really didn't feel like trading. So I just left him alone. I heard a skeleton under one of the houses. And I killed that guy. I got out of there. I collected sand so I can replace the glass panels that I had. While my sand was inside of the furnace, I had an apple. I made a golden apple. Then I went over to the trees and I got a lot of wood. That way I can trade with the new Fletcher that I have because I wanted to have another special type of arrow against the enemies like how i had the slow arrows i wanted something like that so i wanted to trade to get emeralds and just to have special equipment you could also have a useful enchanted bow day 70 the next morning i got a little bit more wood to trade with i traded a lot with this guy but after i was done trading i went back home i replaced all the glass panels with glass blocks since I traded so much with the new Fletcher, he had an enchanted bow for me. This one had Unbreaking 2. I kind of wanted it just to use the anvil and combine the two bows together. That way I have two enchantments. But I wasn't sure if I really wanted it. And since it was day 70, it was the 10th night, meaning I had to survive. And I wanted to try out my tower with something else. I wanted a roof. That way nothing flies into my head and, you know, just explodes. So I wanted to use bar. The bars looked a lot cooler in my head, but when I actually put it down, it was really, really ugly. And they also had holes inside the bars too, meaning maybe a mob could go up top there and then slip through. I don't know. I, I didn't I didn't like it. It was weird. But the sniper tower with the wired fence was going well. Some enemies would be psychotic and go through the quicksand. One of them was immune to arrows. That doesn't work. Okay. And I saw a Nightcrawler, the little invisible enemy. Yeah, that guy, his name is Nightcrawler. The wall behind the sniper tower, enemies just stand there. And I want the sniper, I want the wall to be trimmed down to the point where they don't do that. But nothing was really going on that night. I had an idea to bait the Nightcrawler. So I, I went down sound. there, moved the quicksand, and he just ran right to me. I nearly lost my life. Yeah, you see, if not for this ladder and the quicksand, I most likely would have died. Jesus. It left me with like four and a half hearts off one touch. Once I was finally free, I realized that my entire village was wiped. Going back to the sniper tower, I removed everything up top because I wanted to renovate it and make it look better. But I heard mobs when I was going back inside of my house. I was just chilling under this, like, this part of the ground. Oops. Day 72. I put up all my wired fence and it's all back up. This time though, for the roof, I wanted to have a glass. I don't know what it is with me and glass this run, but I wanted to have a glass roof. That way I can obviously see if something's on top of it too. 
So I just spent the entire day making glass and trimming down this wall. That's, that is really all I did. Day 73, I placed all of the glass and I made my glass roof on the tower. Didn't look bad. I'm pretty sure it looks terrible from far away, but when you're inside of it, it doesn't look bad. But I decided I wanted to travel to the other village to take down those towers. And I was really, really hoping that I can get food on the way there because I didn't have anything. Luckily, there were some pigs and I took out those pigs and I cooked. Once I started traveling again, it was getting dark though. So day 74, I took to the waters. I had a little visitor though. That's a scallywag. Oh my God. Jesus. So after taking out the skellywag, I saw this broken nether portal. I looted it, got everything that I needed. It had a golden apple and a block of gold. Eventually I found the other village. And as soon as I entered the village, I made a librarian and I tried to get sharpness V, but I didn't get anything. And then I got lazy and I was like, I'm not about to sit here and do this. I really wanted to get inside the towers as fast as possible because you know, the longer I wait, the more damage they will do, the stronger they will get overall. So since it was about to get dark with the little time I had, I, I just made some food, picked up wheat, made bread. And I, I, I had really little time. So I just looked around the village. Luckily I did because there was apples. It wasn't a lot of apples, but apples perfect more golden apples we have six golden apples now out of nowhere yeah, i got absolutely horrified by a zombie i like i i, I didn't jump super hard but I, I jumped okay i don't like to admit it but i did day 75 my mission was to take over this tower and i was not gonna stop unless i did They're still inside of here. Ow, oh, they hurt so much. Why do you do so much damage? So I get to the second to last floor. I take out all the mobs. The chest had really nice stuff. These black towers looted. They are they are filled with stuff. So the first chest I get had a bunch of gold, iron, dark metal, and emerald. And I opened the other chest and it had diamonds and iron inside of it with a little bit of emerald. Now, there's one mob inside of the tower that's the most difficult besides the little flying things that go through the wall. And it's this guy who's basically the boss of the tower. He has these bones around him. And no matter how many times you hit him or even try to suffocate him, he takes zero damage. And using an axe doesn't do anything either. Actually, I don't even think I tried using an axe. But if you also keep hitting him, he'll just keep spawning these minions. So I sat here for a while, not knowing what to do. I was, I was stuck, okay? Just listen to this stuff. I, I wanted to use TNT too, but I was afraid of blowing up the chest. And I was like, nah, it's not worth it. 
I ran out of water, so I want to go get some more water. I go back inside of there and it's even louder. So I test inside of another world and turns out that I have to use a dark metal weapon. I have some dark metal, I can make a dark metal weapon. There are dark metal weapons inside of these towers too. Only the black one, there's dark metal weapons inside of them. So while I try to break this block and open the chest, oh God scared the shit out of me. That made me jump harder than anything I've ever had inside of Minecraft. If you break one of the black blocks, you get mining fatigue. I tried to make my own dark metal weapon, but while I was in the middle of this process, something happened. Really? Really? I can't pick up my, oh my God. Where I am, I'm not gonna survive. The enemies are way too strong right now. I don't have an ender pearl. I have three golden apples. Look at how fast they're moving. What is that creature? What is that? What is that thing? I really don't want to find out. That thing probably one shots. It's so creepy looking. Look at how they're just all piling up. Look at how fast he's going. If one zombie spots me, it's it's honestly all over. Okay, they're all going the other way. I'm dead ass just crouching behind a sill. Yeah, they all target me, it's over. Oh, they're attacking the skeleton. The thing that I'm most afraid about is the invisible enemy, the uh, Night Stalker. Because once that thing chases, it's not going to stop. Sure, I have some quicksand, but I don't have a stack of it. I only got 35. I'm going to name you Dave. No, Dave. No, where are you going? Okay. Well. All right. Blood moon setting now. So after the night was over, I decided to attack one of the enemies that drops dark metal, which is the guard to the black tower. Now, I tried placing TNT on him. Doesn't work. I didn't feel like going to get an ax. I was feeling lazy. So I tried suffocating him. He blocks suffocation. What sense does that make? How do you block no air? I, I finally just get up, make an iron ax, go back to him. I try to kill him and I get robbed by a seagull. Oh wait, he just took a golden apple. Fuck. Right. Words can't describe how much I truly hate seagulls inside of this game. Go back inside of the tower, I make a wooden sword, I break the cobweb, open the chest and it has a pile of dark metal. Yes. I try to put the pile of dark metal inside of a furnace. You can't use it inside of a furnace. You can only use it inside of a blast furnace. So I go back outside to the village. I make my blast furnace. And what's crazy is that the blast furnace, it works slowly. Like trying to smelt this, it actually takes a bit. So my stuff gets done. I make a dark metal sword. I wanted to make a scythe, but it would, it would require another thing of dark metal. It was starting to get dark and I didn't want to go back in while it was dark. So instead I spent little time trying to get apples out of the tree. So the next morning I go there, the guy is no longer alive. He's, he's not even there, he despawned or something. I don't know, but I loot the chest. It has dark metal chunks inside of there with iron, which is very good. Well, I had a lot of dark metal chunks, gold in the pearls, I was, I was good. So next was to go inside of the roof and get the dark metal ores. Now there's something a little bit stupid. Well, actually not really. So because it's two completely different mods using the obsidian pack, so I can't pick up the ore. I guess it's not registered inside of the files like for the coding or whatever. So instead I find a iron pickaxe inside of one of the chests. I use that and it actually drops me the dark metal. I wanted to test that the whole breaking block rule was inside of the tower, just inside of the tower and not outside of it. It's outside of it too. You get mining fatigue for like a minute when you do that too. So I wanted to look for another tower. That way I can get some more dark metal chunks. 
so I can make this hammer. I looked around outside at the top of the mountain near the village. There wasn't really anything around. Day 78, I went back down, went to the village. I went to the other tower. I don't know how I completely forgot that I even went inside of there. But I'm glad that I did. I didn't loot the thing entirely. There was apples inside of there. I, just, I tried to check the top of the tower, hoping there was like a dark metal block or something there. There was nothing. There was there was nothing at all. Absolutely nothing. So I went back. I, I just ran back home. I had to travel water. So I made me a boat, but it was getting dark. I slept. Next morning, I crossed the water and there's a broken nether portal. I get a golden block. I check the chest. There was nothing inside of the chest, nothing good at all. Not even gold nuggets. I made it back home and I wanted to make a scythe. Now, the scythe is probably the best weapon that I can possibly use. Sure, the refined obsidian paxel does yeah. 17 damage, but the scythe actually blinds so enemies. Fierce. I don't know if that's even useful at all, but it blinds enemies and it puts withering on them. And, it gives you life still. So I wanted to put mending on this scythe, but I can't gain XP at all. There's, I can't do that. So I went around testing this scythe and you can see that it gives me regeneration three. Pretty cool. I also completely forgot that there was a village right next to mine, but it started getting dark. So day 80, while I, I thought of a way to get XP, I went around traveling and near the village, right by the village there, I don't know what this biome is called, but they have like a bunch of ore just outside of it, like moss. They have moss cobblestone and stuff like that too. While trying to get this ore, I got interrupted by pillagers. I will murder your entire... Okay. I really will kill all of you. Well, this scythe is one of the best things that ever happened to me. These villagers were very annoying. It was very, very annoying to deal with. I wasted quite a bit of time dealing with them too. It was also a 10th night, meaning I have to survive. Oh my God. That scared the shit out of me. I have to start running home immediately. I just watched a fucking creeper teleport. He threw an ender pearl at me. Dog, this is so annoying. I'm so glad I carry Ender Pearls on me. I don't know how I would have gotten out of it if I didn't have it. I made it back home though. And so now I have to try this plan. So the plan was to take off as much armor as I can and put it inside of the chest. All I had was my shield and the chest piece, but that still ate a lot of the XP. So instead I decided to just take it all off, throw it on the ground or put it inside of the chest and then take out whatever I'm smelting and I get XP for that. That way I can put the mending on the site. You see this galaxy destroy you? Dog, stop breaking my windows. I'm killing you. I have to. Come here. A trident? I'm gonna have to teleport out of here. Yeah, I got you. Holy shit. My house was getting really hectic and I once again had to teleport out. So as the sun was rising for day 81, I cleaned up around the house and then inside of my house. A creeper ended up blowing up at my house. So I had to fit, luckily it was at the front of my house and not inside of my house. 
So I had to repair that stuff. So I, I went out to get cobblestone. I replaced the glass. This time, instead of using stone for the door floor, I actually used smooth stone. I continued using my method to get XP and I eventually put mending on my site. I also found out that I had food the entire time. Oh, I've had bread this entire time. Unless I just made that, honestly, I can't remember. I just completely forgot. But Blood Moon. No. So I used the tower. Nothing too crazy happened. I end up surviving the night. It was going crazy inside of my little quicksand thingy. What? I had to do some cleaning up for the morning of day 82. Day 83, I visited a new village. This village was just a village right next to the village that I already visit a lot. Or visited before, I should say. I went over there, took care of sheep and cows. I saw a black structure near the house with the little fire roaches. There was absolutely nothing inside of the chest though. The chest was useless. I wanted to see how much XP I also get with all of the mending stuff on me. Like if I had a weapon in my main hand, how much XP would I get and how much would it repair? The answer is nothing. It's just all random. So I ended up just going back home. I cooked some stuff and then I went to bed. Day 84, I just spent the entire day making quicksand. I put some glass on my tower. And I also made another canteen because I was getting tired of going through my main one. 80 days late, but better late than never. Day 85, I go back to the other village. I fired a farmer and made him a librarian. Once I broke the lector and he just ran all the way to the second thing, the farmer thing, I don't know what it's called. He ran all the way back to the second farmer thing 
and was like, I'm going to do this job instead. But I fired him again. Eventually, he traded me Sharpness V. A lot easier than I thought it would be. But he wanted 45 emeralds for that. I didn't bring any emeralds with me. I didn't bring any books with me. So I had to go all the way home, get my emeralds. But I didn't have any books, so I had to make a book. I went back out, but by the time I was like halfway to the village, it was getting dark. So I slept. The next morning, I was there. I traded with him, got my sharpness V book. So I went all the way back home. I was ready to put sharpness on my site, but I didn't have any XP. I think I, I, I needed six XP or something like that. I had to use my method of getting XP again. But for that, I was gonna need ores. So I went out to get ores and I got quite a bit of copper on the way there. there was a, copper is so easy to come by. But I went to the place where I first made my refined obsidian. By the time I got all the way there, it was getting dark. I met up with the skeleton, I took him out. And then I went to bed. As soon as I wake up, I have an enemy on me. Literally the millisecond I wake up, there's an enemy. Day 87, I took a different route and I saw one of the most beautiful things that I had ever seen inside of Minecraft. I like blue, I like blue a lot. And there was these blue mushrooms inside of this cave and I really wanted to go inside of there, but I was also afraid of going inside of there because I wasn't stacked with gold apples and who knows what's inside of there. Could probably, probably even have a night crawler inside of there. A nightmare crawler inside of there. I, I wasn't risking it. So I just went to the mountain and I collected iron and osmium so I can be able to smelt them and get XP. By the time I made it back home, it was nighttime and I went to bed. Day 88, I started smelting my stuff, but I needed coal. But I ran into a very, very lucky encounter. It's a dog. Yes, I got a dog. This is my first time taming one. It's out of a video at least. Now I have something against skeletons. I don't know where he came from. Seriously, where did you come from? Whatever the case may be, I'm glad I got a dog. You need a name. I'm gonna give you... What do I want to name you? Barkazoid. Your name is Barkazoid. A very nice guy. His name, Barkazoid. 10 out of 10 name. Very cool dog. I absolutely adore Barkazoid. How could you not like him? Very adorable. But I could tell you just trying to get XP for this scythe. Eventually, I got enough XP and I put the sharpness V on my scythe. There we go. All right, we did it. The only reason why I want you with me, Barkazoid, is so that skeletons aren't as much of a problem. Day 89, I wanted to go adventuring and I wanted to find one of those towers again. While traveling, I found one of those little huts where the zombie clown is. Took him out and the chest only had candy corn inside of there, which can be useful. I went around killing some sheep and stuff like that with my main man, Barkazoid. I almost attacked my dog thinking it was the chicken. Look at him go. Nice guy. I found one of the towers relatively quick and I'm glad I did. I didn't have to spend days doing it. So knowing what I was getting into, I made an ax. I thought I can take out the skeleton guard as quickly as I possibly can and as easy as I can. Why are you so fast? After I was done taking it out, I went inside the tower. dog was killed by a silverfish. Great. No way a silverfish has a trident. This is actually wild. I 
feel like if not for this cycle, I actually would have died. One day. I had a Barkazoid for one day. I try to go adventuring with them because I know I know skeletons are scared of them and I lost them that quickly. But day 90, I go inside the tower. I try to take it over. I get to the second to last floor pretty easily. I get a bit of emerald and quite a bit of gold. And that's pretty much all from the second to last floor. I go to the last floor. I now have a dark metal sword to be able to take out the little, the boss, but it took a while. It took a lot of hits. This guy just wouldn't die. How much HP do you have? Oh, he's dead. Holy, I can't even see. Can't see. Now the top floor had it all. It had golden apples, diamonds, gold, iron, all of it. Everything I needed. Now I needed to go to the roof and get the pieces of dark metal, but I didn't have any blocks. All I had was quicksand. So I had to, I had to craft golden blocks to use as a leverage to get inside. I got inside of there, but I needed a pickaxe in order to pick up dark metal. So I used iron to make an iron pickaxe. I went back to the roof, picked up the dark pieces of metal. Somehow, some way, I got the mining fatigue. I didn't even break a block, but I got I got mining fatigue and I was stuck inside of there. I couldn't get out of there and a blood moon rose. By the time I was to get out of there, there was gonna be monsters piled up everywhere and I really didn't want to risk just getting obliterated. I also needed water. So I just sat up there stuck. Once the sun started to rise, I, I got out of there. I cleaned my way out the tower. By the time I made it home, it was getting dark. Day 92, I decided to make a saber. I didn't really know what other weapon to make. And I only needed two pieces to make a dark hammer, a dark metal hammer, but I only had like eight days left. So what was the point? So I made a saber instead and I, I was, I didn't know what to do. I was just hopping around, looking around, wondering what to do. This day I was, I was just lost. Day 93, I started trimming the wall. I was tired of mobs just sitting there when I'm inside of my sniper tower. I wanted them to go towards the sniper tower. But later in the day, I decided I wanted to go to the blue mushroom place that I saw earlier. So I traveled around looking for this place and I completely forgot where it was. Day 94, on my way to one of the villages, I got robbed. No. Oh my God, come on. Really? I'll make sure to kill you. Come on. Come down. I know you want to. 
God, all things, an apple he takes. So after getting robbed of my apple, I went around trying to get more apples to make up for the lost apple. I only ended up getting two apples, better than nothing at all. So I made it to the other village. I was thinking to myself, maybe the mushrooms are deeper inside the cave. So I decided the next morning I will go there, try to get to the blue mushrooms. And that was kind of a mistake. I literally cannot check. Like, I, I can't go in and check. Every time I try to, a new one spawns. And they have some crazy ability or just strong. Like, why? God, okay. I'm not going in that cave. I don't even know if it's the right one. I'll just check the other cave instead. Where were you when I needed you, Iron Golem? I spent that whole day trying to get into that cave, but they just really would not allow it. So day 96, I decided to go home. I ended up making it home and I just cooked food. The next day, I continued traveling, trying to find out where this cave was. I just couldn't find it. So I found this one cave. It looked super empty. So that wasn't it. I was, it was hurting my head trying to figure out where this place was. I just, I couldn't figure it out. Eventually, I finally found it though, but it started snowing. So I never mentioned, but a nightmare crawler, they disappear as soon as the sun rises. Like no damage or anything, they just poof, they vanish. But if it's snowing, that never happens. So they can probably even spawn when it's snowing. Now I really wanted to go inside of the blue mushroom cave, but I didn't have any ender pearls. So my confidence of survival was just little to none.
So I just went back home. Day 98, I saw that I can make this mask and it said that at night I get movement speed, but it also said full armor set for the thing, but I assumed that was like a different thing. I made it anyway, but I spent this day in preparation. I tried to collect apples and stuff like that, but while I was doing that, I nearly died. Oh. What is happening? An axe? Really? I actually didn't have this scythe, I would have died. I don't know what this butterfly is supposed to do. So after I was done with all of my foolery, I only managed to get two apples through that day and I made me golden apples. All right, and it's day 99, the last day. I spent the daytime trying to get apples. Usually I survive on the 10th, but I wanted to, you know, it, since it's the last day, I have to. So through this day, out of all the daylight, I've only gotten two apples. I had a total of seven golden apples, which is good. Now this mask I was excited to use because it said it gives movement speed at nighttime. It wasn't giving me any movement speed. So I was sad after that, but I finally made it to the last day. I took off the helmet, put on my normal helmet, and I just did my thing. Try to survive day 99. Holy. How much HP do you have?
So I end up surviving the night, but I have to clean up. I do the cleanup. In the middle of my cleanup, my game crashes. It it just I don't know why, but it just crashed. So I I end up getting back on top of the tower, but it plays out a little bit differently. Holy. Three hearts. Jesus Christ. And so I did it. I spent a hundred days. This is one of the most mentally draining things I've done. Not because it's a hundred days, but just because of how bad I am with the difficulty. All right, Galaxy Destroyer. Fred Ferret. It's been neat. But I am done. But I'll be back again. Next time, it won't take as long. But I'll see you all next time.